So in preparation for welding these guys together, what I've done is I've ground away most of the raw material that was there and left a jagged surface to bond to where I have um, exposed metal to get these in some acetone and then I'm going to braze them together. Okay, I've got the parts cleaned up with the acetone. I've got my silicon bronze wire cleaned off. I'm ready to tack this in place. I'm using the support ring and the existing rod to pull it all together. somewhere where I feel a little bit more comfortable working with it. That's what I'm looking for right there. Get another one in. I've never done this before, so it's really interesting that as to kind of what's happening. seems to start nice and then I end up with a problem where it just wants to create these giant bubbles. I don't like that. I don't know what to do about it. That seemed better. Let me get this over and get it into some sand. All right. Following teeth brazing, this is what we're left with. I'm going to go turn most of that off and see how it looks. So the lathe couldn't touch it got it here in the grinder so it can turn and get cut by the grinder. I'm just bringing the head down. The silicon bronze weld was just way too hard. Couldn't cut it with carbide. Couldn't cut it with a file. Let it spark out. 
Looks like it's exactly where it needs to be, except I need to dress the wheel to completely get rid of any kind of corner radius in there. This isn't the right wheel, that's what I've got. bringing the diameter of the wheel down and as I'm going down it's coming further into the part at least in this particular setup and this is that motor I rewound I'm trying to get that last little bit of that corner radius out of there Redress the wheel. It still has it. I can't. Uh, this wheel doesn't seem to be fine enough to really let me get in there into that corner. Let me get this wheel changed. We'll see what we can go with. So my head was moving on me a lot. I feel a lot better about that cut. Just in case you uh, were expecting me to show you how I'm going to clean these off, they're soaking in some evapo rust right now. Here's the brush I'm going to use, and uh, I'm going to clean all this stuff up and get it ready for reassembly. Stand by. So after taking the index table apart, I decided not to fix the damage done from the worm on the worm gear here. It seems to be okay. I've got this set up right now to do a, just a quick test to see what type of parallelism that I have between the face and the surface that rides inside of the head itself. I will probably end up scraping this in the future, but not right now. All right, let's get this indicator over here. This is a tense indicator. Give this just a quick spin around. I did soak this in evapo rust and then lightly stoned it. There were a couple dings on it I had to lightly scrape. Just a little bit of deviation there as it comes around. When it drops in the oil grooves it is it ends up being what it is. And that can be enough to change this indicator a little bit. Nice. So here's that face. It had some scrapes here, 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 little here, and here. 
and that's uh, the finish that I'm getting after the evaporust and a very light stoning the Morris taper adapter sits up a little higher so I was careful to avoid riding over that too much just get these parallels out of the way the next big issue came with this guy we knew that it had been dropped and I ended up using silicon bronze to weld it back together. I ended up over, I didn't quite braze, it's partial braze, partial weld as some of the cast iron actually flowed into there. And this was extremely hard to turn. I couldn't turn with high speed steel. Uh, carbide wouldn't touch it. So I ended up mounting it in the grinder. And we've got some footage for that. And then I also came back and I ground this area with a taper of about five degrees going back so that when the other piece tightens up it has something to grip and pull it this way as it was when I left it flat it kept wanting to move away off the hardened piece and squish into the softer material as the interference line was right there the worm screw or the entire worm assembly it ends up going in quite nicely it actually spins where, as before, this would not even turn. It was so warped. And that's also why I had to rejoin these two pieces of, uh, of cast iron. And once I finished the, ta the, the welding, immediately put it in a sand bucket for about an hour and let it slowly cool down. It hasn't cracked at this point in time. I'm not expecting it to. This bearing had a lot of old oil. It now freely turns. We'll be lubricating this up with a, just a light lithium. Same thing with the back thrust bearing. That pulls the table down into the, the whole device. This uh, wouldn't, wouldn't turn before. Now it turns nicely. The back was completely rusted. I've got a little couple spots that I've had to scrape on. This was a large ding that raised the burr up on the back side. And put this on the table. We'll check it really quick just to get an idea. We're at plus five tenths. I just bumped the outside, which changed it. So now we're at plus one thousandths. I'm down to, there's a low, low spot in the casting, so down to minus, or to plus three tenths. I'm back up to, six or seven thousandths so there is some work that's going to need to be done with this in terms of scraping later on but for now i'm ready to start putting this guy back together i'm going to move it back over to a different work surface